Well, when you're told you've got nine months to live, you look to your oncologist for advice. I said to him, okay, where do we go from here? I've heard about clinical trials. There must be some available. And he said, well, I could have a look. And then at that point I realized no one is ever going to be as passionate about keeping me alive as me. So I decided I'd better get down to research. I'd have to um, find out about clinical trials, protocols, all the eligibility criteria, everything that related to finding a drug that may help me. Although at first I didn't receive much help. My research coincided with a new drug, a new kid on the block, called ipilimumab or Yervoy, and that was granted a license just after, not long after I was diagnosed as stage four. So that was quite fortuitous. And I received a carbazine initially as first line, which is how it's licensed in the UK, and then ipilimumab. The decarbazine had a very toxic effect on my body. I became very ill after two cycles. And so it was decided that I should only have two out of the four and go straight on to the ipilimumab, which I did. I had four cycles of ipilimumab. I responded very well to the drug. I had very few side effects. And um, initially, the first CT scan that I had after the conclusion of the trial showed that my tumours were enlarged. Well, this is consistent with the drug working, so I wasn't overly concerned about this. The second CT scan showed that my tumours had shrunk, which was amazing. And I had no new sites, so it was very contained which is, and, and it shrank, which means that I am presenting as well as I am today. Unfortunately, I had progression in August 2013, and I've been unable to secure any funding at all for a re-challenge of ipilimumab at home. And so I had to look to other clinical trials once I knew I had progression, which took me to nivolumab. Well, I was accepted onto the trial. Tick, you know, phase one completed. Unfortunately, it was a two to one randomized trial. That means for every two people that obtain the nivolumab, one will be allocated to a standard chemotherapy arm. In this case, it was DTIC, which is decarbazine. I was devastated to find that I had been allocated to the standard chemotherapy arm. This is the very drug that wasn't of any help to me and made me feel ill. So I was incredibly disappointed. Actually, I wasn't. I was crushed. I cried for hours. By this time, I was five, four, five, uh, four months into a diagnosis, prognosis of nine months to live. Was I prepared to commit myself to a drug that I knew was going to be of no use to me? No, I wasn't, so I withdrew from the trial. And the whole process then begins again with the clock tick-tocking. The decision to leave the nivolumab trial was difficult because I knew that I would be interfering with trial statistics, but I am a human being. I'm not, I'm not a, 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 you know, a creature that's going to put myself forward to be ill. I can't do that. I can't do it to my, myself, I can't do it to my family. But I'd entered a contract with Bristol Myers Squibb to say that, um, which I had a clause to say I could withdraw at any time without giving a reason. 
and I decided to exercise my right to do that. Unfortunately, um, my local oncologist uh, felt that I was adversely affecting trial statistics and did say in a letter that if he was going to refer to me to Southampton for the re-challenge of ipilimumab trial, which obviously I was very keen to be part of, that I needed to give them some reassurance that I would accept whatever drug I was allocated to. Now the ipilimumab trial was again a randomized two to one trial. Two people would receive the rechallenge of ipilimumab, but there was a DTIC arm as well. All I could do was reassure him that I would do that, but that caused me a lot of problems because I felt that it was totally unethical to put me in that position. Well, I've been looking hard at clinical trial design and I feel that it is unethical to present an arm to a patient which everybody knows isn't going to be of help. DTIC has been proven over the last 30 years to be of very little help to patients. Very few percent has a response and we know that it's very short-lived. Therefore, if you've had previous phases of a clinical trial that has indicated a good response and you put that up against something that you know isn't going to work, there's an immediate conflict of interest, an immediate imbalance arises where you, you're putting your doctor in the position of offering you something that he knows is ineffective and therefore it becomes unethical. I can't expect any sympathy. I want my voice to be heard. I want clinical trial designers, drug companies, I want everybody to know how hard it is to know there are drugs out there and you can't get them. I'd like them to try and explain it to my children because I find it very difficult. They would love me to receive some treatment and um, seeing them in pain day after day is the most difficult thing. That's really hard.